So you got your tiny SA and you want to use the high uh, connector and you want to do a calibration. Well, there's a little bit of bad news for you. The tiny SA cannot calibrate itself. There's not enough hardware in the tiny SA to calibrate itself. You need a transfer standard. And you need to have a RF source that can be measured both on the low and the high. So once you've calibrated the low, you can then use the low port to measure the source and then transfer that information to the high channel and that's the way you calibrate it. But it requires you to have an external source. That external source needs to be between 240 and 350 megahertz. And the reason it has to be between those two frequencies is it has to be able to be measured both on the low and the high. And there's an overlap. The low goes up to 350, the high goes down to 240. So you need to be within that 240 to 350 range in order to transfer this thing. Now, 99.9% .9 of the people out there are not going to have RF generators sitting around. Uh, they only spent $50 on a spectrum analyzer. They're not going to have a bunch of other stuff. So what are they going to do? Well, I'm going to try to give you the uh, poor man's version of a transfer standard. So we're going to need a couple things. So uh, unfortunately, you, you'll need to go buy some things. Uh, you'll need to have uh, three things. You'll need to have a connector of some sort uh, in order to be able to connect it up to the tiny SA. So I've chosen a uh, one of the cheapest ones that I can think of, which is this little PC board mount SMA connector. And that will allow us to use a cable to go between this and the uh, spectrum analyzer. So you'll need a connector. Uh, then you'll need an oscillator. You'll need some type of RF source. So we're going to use uh, one of these TTL level oscillator cans. Now, they come in two different sizes. They come in the in the 14 pin version and the 8 pin version. And um, they always have four pins on them and the pinout's always the same, all right? There's a little uh, corner on them that's sharp and then three corners that are rounded. The sharp corner is pin one. Uh, sometimes there's an ink mark as well. This one has a black ink mark that says it's pin one. Um, so anyway, um, so if this was a normal uh, IC, this would be pin 1. This would end up being pin 7, pin 8, and then pin 14. So there's only, there's only four pins on the bottom. So 1, 7, 8, and 14, all right? Pin, uh, pin 7 is always going to be ground. Pin 14 is always going to be plus 5. And then the output's going to be on pin 8. Pin 1's not used, okay? So you can ignore that. If you have one of these uh, small ones, it's going to be the exact same thing, okay? It's going to be uh, just a shortened version. Pin 1, and then this corner, which is pin 4, I guess, is uh, ground, and then this corner is out, and this corner is plus 5, okay? So just think of the four corners. So we're going to need, we're going to need an oscillator. Now, we're going to need an oscillator that goes between 240 and 350 to, oops, 240 and 350. Well, you're not going to be able to go to the store and buy one of those, okay? You're going to, you're going to get something lower. So we're going to have to rely on harmonics. Now, these are square wave oscillators, so hopefully we'll have harmonics in this range. So you want to get as high of a, an oscillator as you can get. Um, there's going to be some that are very common and some that aren't common. So I believe up to 48 megahertz, 48 megahertz is pretty common. And then above 48 megahertz is not very common. So I'm going to go ahead and try to design this with a 48 megahertz oscillator. Uh, that's, that's, that's hopefully common enough that everybody can find one. Uh, I looked through my, my collection of, uh, of oscillators and, uh, Almost all of them are in the 4 to 16 megahertz range. I've uh, been collecting them over the years. Uh, there are some that go up to maybe 32 megahertz, 28 megahertz, something like that. I had a couple that were in the 48 range. This one is 44.736. 
Uh, so we could use that one, and then I actually have a real 48 megahertz, so I'll just use that one because the mathematics is easier uh, for us to, uh, to calculate. So, so 48 megahertz. So 48 megahertz, um, we are going to rely on its harmonics. So the second harmonic will be at 96. Third harmonic will be at 144. Then 240, but we're right on the edge. So 240 is probably not gonna work. So let's go one more. Oops. 288. 288. So 288 is hopefully the, the harmonic that we'll see. Now that's going to be lower in amplitude, okay? One, two, three, so fourth harmonic, one, two, three, four, yeah. So uh, we'll see, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and wire this up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, connect the output to the center pin, but uh, I don't want any DC offset, so I'm going to put in a capacitor between the output and the connector. So almost any capacitor is going to work. This is a 0 0.01 microfarad. Um, so we will put that in there and get that wired up and then we'll go measure it and uh, see how we see how we see how we go. Now one one thing to worry about is I don't know how many dBm this is going to create. And we have to worry about the total dBm, not just one of the harmonics. So um, we have to make sure that we measure all of these harmonics and the total content is going to be less than 0 dBm. I don't want any more than 0 dBm. So once we wire this up, we'll measure it, but we'll make sure that we have a 30 dB pad in there originally, just in case this thing's outputting quite a bit of power. I have another one that I built once and it output plus 12 dBm, which is, you know, too much. So we'll wire this one out and then we'll be careful when we measure it the first time. All right, so I have uh, I have it wired up. I have the little capacitor in here going between the pin eight and the output, and then seven and ground are tied together. And then here's uh, here's VCC. So let's uh, need we need uh, we need five volts power. So I'm bringing that in with a power supply. So one of them's going to go to the ground of the connector here. The other one's going to go to the plus VCC side. And so let's see what we got. And all we have is reflections. Nice. Uh, there we go. All right. So we certainly have something at 48 megahertz and we're measuring minus 13 dBm. So we have a 30 dB pad in here. So remember I told you, we will better have that 30 dB pad in here because um, Let's see, that's 13.3, so 30 minus 13.3 is 16.7. So it's plus 16.7 dBm coming out of the, uh, uh, the oscillator. So that would definitely damage your, damage your device. So um, we have to make sure that we, we keep this 30 dB pad in there at all times now. Um, even on the high channel, we need to have this in there all the time. So let's go out here and see if we have our, what would we expect, a 288... Um, 288 megahertz, um, uh, harmonic, and we have something at 288, but this one's bigger. Oh, that's our 240. That's the one we didn't, that's the one we didn't want. It's 239.9, so it's a little bit too low. But we have a bigger one over here. Maybe that one will work out too. So let's, um, let's go to markers. Oops. No, not that. Uh, oh, markers. Markers, search. Maximum right, maximum right. And then let's get out of there. So at 335, ah, that one will work. 335 is below 350. So let's let's use that one. So let me write it down. 335.84. Interesting. Um, and we're measuring, so we need to write this down. We need to measure how much it's measuring because we're going to use that as a transfer standard. So it's measuring minus, 
it's fluctuating. It's measuring between minus 29 and minus 30. I'd say it's averaging around minus 31. We'll call it minus 31. Okay, so we'll say this is a minus 31 at 335.84. Okay. So now that, let's move our, remember, keep that, keep that uh, in, uh, attenuator on there because we're outputting plus 16, right? So we're going to move that to the high side. Oh dear, my fat fingers can't get in here to the, put this on. Okay, so then let's go to mode high in, and there we go. We have a bunch of harmonics, and then let's go to frequency center uh, 335.84. I don't know about this 0.84. It's probably 336, right? Anyway, uh, megahertz. Oh, that crystal's a bit off. Okay, so it's measuring minus 55. Um, and we said it's minus 31. Wow. I'm, I'm shocked. Okay, well, uh, we do have a bunch of spurs and stuff. I hope that's not going to get us in the way. Let's go ahead and change our span to 10 kilohertz. Make sure we're not integrating. Uh-oh, now we're... Not seeing anything. Span, span of 80 kilohertz. And now we're still not seeing anything. Interesting. Span of 1 megahertz. Uh, there it is. Okay, so it's, uh, it's measuring really poorly. So I think we'll have to go to level attenuate and we'll put on attenuation. Yeah, there we go. And now we're measuring something more reasonable too. All right, so a second step that you have to do is I really don't like the high side. Um, it's just not as nice as the low side. I know they put it in because it kind of came for free. So it's nice to have, but it does have its quirks. So make sure what you go to attenuate and you set it to this um, low attenuation, this 22.5 to 40 decibels. Now, it's not actually applying a attenuator. It's actually doing it in software. So anyway, so now we're measuring minus around minus 35 to minus 36. And we re remember from the last one, when we measured it on the low channel, it was minus 31. All right, so now we want, so we're gonna transfer. We're gonna say, okay, I trust the low one, which, it's going to have a bunch of error, but let's say that we trust the low one and we're going to uh, transfer it to the high one. Okay. So now we go to config, expert config, actual power, and we'll put in minus 31. So remember the minus sign, minus 31. And now that, that will measure minus 31 and we're at, uh, the same level that we that we had on the low one. So that's the way that you could transfer something with very little money. Okay, you still have to build this little transfer standard that I showed you, but you know it's pretty cheap. Um, the best way to do this, in all reality, is to get yourself an actual RF generator that can output in the right range, and have a power meter to calibrate the the uh, generator. So you can then calibrate both the low and the high channel to accurate numbers. Remember, we're, you, we're, we're relying on the tiny SA to give us the correct number out of the low port. Well, it's not. It, it's just not. It'll be plus or minus maybe 2 dB or 3 dB or something. It's just, it's just not going to be that accurate. You really need to have a calibrated source to calibrate your spectrum analyzer. So, but anyway, um, this is the cheapest way I could come up with is to transfer transfer from low to high. And again, remember that the total harmonic content of our little oscillator was plus 16 dBm. So we had to use an external uh, attenuator. So that's something else you have to buy, right? So I'm sorry, but there are, 
there are limitations to doing RF and you do have to have some equipment. So anyway, this is how you build a little oscillator, use its harmonic series, how to use an attenuator, and then how to transfer uh, readings from the low channel to the high channel. Um, like I said, in order to do it right, you would have to have a lot more equipment.